In today's video, we're going to be going over the nine best foods you can eat to reverse insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is extremely common, but also goes largely undiagnosed until it's progressed to prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. And this is because doctors do not routinely test fasting insulin. They focus on fasting glucose, which is helpful, but it doesn't tell us a lot about insulin resistance in the early stages. When we're in the early stages of insulin resistance, there is enough insulin being pumped out to deal with the excess glucose. So your blood sugar will look normal, but your insulin will be elevated. Signs you're insulin resistant include skin tags on your neck and armpits, high blood pressure, and excess abdominal fat. These are all really strong indicators of insulin resistance, even if you have normal fasting blood sugar. Now, when it comes to reversing insulin resistance, the key is to keep your insulin low. You do this by reducing your need for insulin by choosing foods that don't require a lot of insulin to process. Now, I'm not going to get too into the cause of insulin resistance today. I do have a whole video on the cause of it, which I will link above if you want to check that out afterwards. But anyways, if you would like to know the nine best foods you can eat to reverse insulin resistance, keep watching. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate and I am a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos twice a week here on YouTube about insulin resistance, blood sugar management, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you want to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I share new posts every single day. Number one, eggs. Eggs are one of the best foods you can eat for insulin resistance, and I'm specifically talking about the whole egg. Not only are eggs rich in protein and fat, which have a minimal impact on insulin, they are also super nutrient dense, packed with fat soluble vitamins and other micronutrients. And a quick note before we move on about eggs and about dietary cholesterol, because this is something I'm asked about all the time. If you're worried about dietary cholesterol, don't be. Dietary cholesterol has a minimal impact on our blood cholesterol, and the recommendation to limit it is outdated. Even the US dietary guidelines removed it as a nutrient of concern in 2015. Number two, avocado. Avocados are another food that is great for insulin resistance. They're high in fat, and they're also high in fiber, which makes the blood sugar and insulin response to them minimal. But on top of this, they're also rich in the electrolyte potassium. They contain more potassium than bananas gram for gram. Potassium plays a role in influencing the pancreas and the release of insulin. Lack of potassium is thought to lead to a reduction in insulin secretion and impaired glucose tolerance. One study done on almost 5,000 people over 30 years showed that 373 of the participants developed type 2 diabetes and that the potassium intake of these individuals was lower than average. Now that's not enough data to draw any definite conclusions, but it is interesting to note. Number three, oily fish. Cold water oily fish such as salmon, sardine, herring, mackerel, and anchovies are also great for insulin resistance. These type of fish are extremely high in omega-3 and omega-3 in its most bioavailable form. The type of omega-3 found in chia seeds and flax seeds is ALA and needs to be converted by the body to DHA and EPA, which is the beneficial form. However, the human body is not great at converting ALA to DHA and EPA. It only has the ability to convert 10% max. And if ALA isn't converted, it's just treated like any other fatty acid and doesn't have the additional benefits you often hear about one of which is improving insulin sensitivity. Number four, berries. Berries are among the types of fruit that are lowest in sugar. Because of this, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, all have a minimal impact on blood sugar and insulin. Number five, red meat. Now, red meat gets a lot of hate and a lot of undeserved hate. A lot of people think it is unhealthy 
and especially when compared to other types of meat such as chicken. But this is nonsense. Beef and other types of red meat actually have nutrients that can directly help you to improve insulin sensitivity, one of which being stearic acid. Stearic acid is a type of fat that is rich in beef fat and has properties that protect against insulin resistance. Now, you might have heard of stearic acid supplements before. They are often touted as being beneficial for weight loss. But you can get this nutrient directly from food, such as red meat, as well. Number six, non-starchy vegetables. Non-starchy vegetables, such as broccoli, cauliflower, and cucumber, are low in carbohydrates. They have a minimal impact on blood sugar and a minimal impact on insulin, making them ideal for insulin resistance. Number seven, olive oil. So next up, we have olive oil. Olive oil is one of the healthiest oils you can consume, and I especially recommend it as an alternative to vegetable oil. Now, when I say vegetable oil, I am referring to canola oil, soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, rice bran oil, and safflower oil. Ironically, none of these oils actually come from vegetables. They come from seeds. These types of oils are high in polyunsaturated fat and omega-6, which can be inflammatory for the body and contribute to insulin resistance. So use olive oil instead, use it for low temperature cooking or have it fresh, such as on salads or on other foods. And forget the vegetable oil, cut it out of your diet entirely. Number eight, apple cider vinegar. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, I'm sure you've heard me talk about apple cider vinegar before. I am a huge fan of using it as a tool when reversing insulin resistance. Taking a tablespoon diluted in water before a meal significantly lowers the blood sugar and insulin response to that meal. So especially if you're having a meal that has a few more carbohydrates, taking apple cider vinegar before can help to make that meal more insulin friendly. Number nine, beef tallow. And this is the final food we're gonna talk about today, beef tallow. Beef tallow is made from rendering the fat of beef. And this is the best fat to use for high heat cooking. The reason I included beef tallow on this list is because of the high amount of stearic acid it contains, which you'll remember we spoke about can be beneficial for insulin resistance earlier. Now, you'll also remember that when I mentioned olive oil, I said to use it fresh or to use it for low temperature cooking. And that is because the type of fat that mainly makes up olive oil is not as heat stable as the type of fat that is in beef tallow. If you heat it too much, you run the risk of it oxidizing and that's not ideal. <laughs> that is one of the reasons why I don't recommend vegetable oil. It has an even lower point at which it oxidizes when you heat it. So vegetable oils down here, olive oils here, and beef tallow is here. So you can heat olive oil a little bit, but I wouldn't use it for anything above low temperature cooking. And those are the nine best foods you can eat to reverse insulin resistance. So to recap, number one, eggs, number two, avocado, number three, oily fish, number four, berries, number five, red meat, number six, non-starchy vegetables, number seven, olive oil, number eight, apple cider vinegar, and number nine, beef tallow. Let me know in the comment section down below how many of these foods you already eat. And if you're not already, make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss an upload. Again, I upload twice a week, tons of videos on insulin resistance, and I try to simplify things. So if you're feeling overwhelmed and kind of confused about it, check out some of my other videos. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on what causes insulin resistance. You can check it out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find them here. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.